Hey guys, it's Rick. I'm back for Pajama Craft Stamps and Prickly Pear today, and we are going to be using the sketched Flora Hydrangea stamp set from Prickly Pear to create a fun watercolor card. This is going to be a super easy watercolor technique that anybody can do. I've got my water bottle, a paper towels, um, watercolor brushes. I've got a number two and a number four round brush. I'm going to stamp out my large hydrangea, which is like my favorite flower onto some Canson XL watercolor paper. I'm using some VersaFine on its black ink because it's nice and waterproof. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this out twice so that I have a nice good impression. And I hope y'all stick out to the end so y'all can see how this card turns out. All right, so we're gonna be using Distress Inks and I'm using Shabby, I'm uh, sorry, Shaded Lilac Wilted Violet and a little Victorian Velvet for my um, hydrangeas. And for the leaves, I'm using mowed lawn and peeled paint. So, we are starting off with our leaves. And I'm going to do those in two different ways. I'm going to lay in my shadows, the darkest color first. And I'm going to pull that out with my brush. I use the two brush method where I take and will... Add clean water with one brush, usually the smaller brush or the bigger brush, depends on the size of area I'm using. And then I will pull the color out with the other brush, just with a thirsty brush. And if you are new to that, it means that you have dipped the paint, the brush in water and soaked most of the excess water off on a paper towel. So that's, you can see me flooding the paper right there and that just is a fancy term for filling the paper with water. So I'm putting laying down my first application of color. I'm going to lay down the other side and I'm going to come in the middle with just clean water and blend, pull those two sections together. So it's going to be lighter in the middle and the, around the edge and on the inside it's going to be darker. So I went ahead and done the rest of those off screen. We're going to do that same technique with our leaves of our, I'm sorry, our petals of our hydrangea. And in my world, the hydra I'm having in my garden the hydrangeas in three different colors. We're doing the pinky hydrangeas with the Victorian velvet ink right now. And I did add some of that in the background. And we're going to have like a shaded lilac. And we're going to have the, which is like a bluey color. And a blue violet. And then we're going to have a violet one with the wilted violet. So when I do this, I start out by putting in the shadow first in the petals that are back behind there. Because a hydrangea is a cluster of flowers. So you're going to need to put those shadows back in there to make it look more realistic. So I'm come in and I have added a little bit of color um, in the center. And I'm going to pull that out to make it lighter at the edges because it's a flower. And I, or anywhere that a petal overlaps another petal, I will have the shadow and pull it out from there. Um, this is just my first application of color. We are going to come in after I get everything painted and dried, and I will come in and um, add a second layer to make it more intense. But we'll get to that when we get there, so hang out. Um, let me know if you like hydrangeas in the comments. They're like my favorite. But you can see how I'm put in that shadow color, and I'm just pulling it out on the edges. I just pull it out with nice clean water on that thirsty brush. And I'm going to do that, finish up this flower with that technique, and then we're going to move on to our next flower, which is going to be our blue violet one, which is with the sh um, sh sh shaded lilac, if I could read. So I'm done that same process. I've put in my shadow where I want it to be the darkest, and I'm pulling that out with the lightest color. And I will tell you a little tip or hint. When we get to the will to violet, you're going to be amazed at how this looks. I did drop in some of that shaded lilac in the shadow area of that... Um, Victorian velvet pinky hydrangea to give it a little bit more oomph. Anytime you want to increase your shadow, add a little bit of a cooler color and it's going to make the shadow even pop a little bit more. You could also even use a complementary color to that and make it really pop. All right, so we're just coming in and we're going to continue painting our flowers. You can see me switching between the brushes. I will add the low um, color down with one brush and then pull it out with a second brush. So I'm added in my shadow area where I want that to be the darkest on that blue violet hydrangea, which is typically actually the same color as the hydrangeas that grow in my front yard. 
is I, we have the blue ones. Um, we also have supposed to have a white one, but it doesn't ever, it hasn't really bloomed out. So we're just going to continue on pulling those out. You can do a couple at a time if you want to, like I'm doing. I usually tend to stick to one of the um, flowers in the cluster each time. I just find it easier. Sometimes I might do multiples, but we're just putting in our flower, any uh, the color anywhere we want it to be the darkest, pulling that out with the blue violet. You can see how lovely this turns out. You gives you it's an easy way to get your highlight and your mid-tone and your shadow color all with just that one ink color. So you don't have to overthink it. That's part of the problem when people watercolor, they overthink a lot. You don't have to overthink. Now we're going to come in with our wilted violet. And if you really pay attention when we get down here, you're going to start seeing how that changes when it's pulled out. So I'm putting in my shadow colors first back in the back of the cluster. And then I'm going to come in and drop in my shadow and pull that out on these flowers up here. I usually stop at the top, top and kind of come down. Um, I just find it easier to work that way. And that, that petal right there, you can see how it goes from that bluey kind of violet to the wilted violet. And then it, as you pull it out, it gets that beautiful pink um, violet color. It has more red in it. And it just, it just, oh my God, it's like the chef's kiss. It's so pretty. It just gives that whole hydrangea just a little bit more life than what you could do just with any other media. So we're going to continue on by putting in our shadows and just popping and pulling that color out, building up those layers um, as we go down. It's just, this is not the easiest way to learn how to watercolor. And it took me years to learn how to traditional watercolors. I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all. I had a love-hate relationship with watercolors. I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and could never do it. But then finally one day I kept practicing and practicing and practicing. I'd buy every book, take every class I could. And I just found it one day it just clicked and I could start doing it. I don't know what happened. It was just, I guess it just clicked in my head or I got over that hump and I could just, I could then watercolor. It was just, and you had to get over that fear. And I've taught several watercolor classes. Um, in the past, so I could even teach it now. So this is one of the easiest techniques that I always try to teach, is to lay in those shadow colors, especially for my card makers. And you pull it out with the lightest color, and you can come back and intensify like I just did. I didn't have enough color on the brush, so I added a little bit more before I pulled that out. That's one thing about this whole technique. Pro tip here, you want to make sure you have enough pigment down in the shadow area to begin with, before you start pulling it out with a thirsty brush. Otherwise, it's not going to show up very well. All right, so we're going to continue and finish off these last few little clust flower clust flowers of the cluster. I could not talk. Life is a cruel situation today. I guess I'm getting a little nervous. So, little story time. I will be having, the day this video comes out, I will be having quote-unquote surgery is what they're calling it. Basically, I have a frozen shoulder, and they I've done eight weeks of therapy PT so far, and they are going to knock me out and manipulate the shoulder to try to break up all that scar tissue. But they are calling it surgery, but there's no cutting involved. As I have made sure of that. <laughs> so, thank you if y'all watching this video on Wednesday, and hope everything goes well. All right, so we are going to continue adding our second layer of color now. I've just kind of put in a little bit of water, and then I will drop in just a little bit of color here and there to build up that intensity. Now I'm going to do that same thing with the second layer, uh, or the set, the blue-violet flower here at the top. And for this one, I actually did the, I added more hard shadows. And if you don't know what a hard shadow is, it just means it doesn't have that soft transitional line that you might see on some other, um, in some other shadows. If you really start looking at nature, you're going to see hard shadows and you're going to see soft shadows. So you want to have some of each of those in your projects to make it look more realistic. And we're going to do that same thing with our last flower down there. I did add a little bit of that blue violet that was left on the um, glass mat to the background so that it would kind of help tie in everything. Because you had to have a little sky back there.
So I'm going to put some hard shadows back into the Victorian velvet flower, the little pink one. And we're just going to add those little hard shadows and not soften the edges out on every one of them. Some of them I do soften, some of them I don't. I just put the line in there. So I came back and softened that one. I'm going to add just a little bit more right there. And I will come back and soften that one at the bottom. Now we're going to take the coordinating sketch florals hydrangea dies. And I'm going to cut this out. Now this die does not cut out the entire um, front as you can see. Because the stamp is actually a card front size. But it does it cuts out like three quarters of it. Or three half, three three and a half inches of it. So I'm going to add in, I've got a A2 card panel. I'm taking some tumble glass distress oxide and I'm just adding a little bit of color back there for my sky. And then I ended up cutting this panel down. I'm going to, before I cut it down, I'm going to flick on some of that distress oxide ink with just a regular paintbrush, small paintbrush, flick in a little texture in the background to give it a little bit of something, something, make it look a little fun. So we are going to cut that panel down. I'm trying to. I'm going to decide now what stamp set I want to use for my sentiment because I didn't want it just as a hydrangea that's in the sketch floral. I used the. This is the banner. What's this called? Banners Love Stamp Set from Prickly Prickly Pear. It has some great love themed sentiments. I do use this on the save the date on a card that you'll see later on this week. So be watching for that. Um, it will be on Instagram and my blog. So I've cut that panel down to just fit the card front, which I think it's like three and a half by four. No. Yes, three and a half by four, I believe. But I am going to mat it on a little black cardstock. And I'm just going to attach that. This is a scrap of black I had. And I'm going to cut that, line it up, and give it a nice little border. And I'm just going to cut the other two sides so that they have the same equal little border on both sides. And now I can take and attach that to my card base on my A2 card. So I'm going to add a little sparkle to this. I'm going to take a glitter pen. This is the clear overlay pen from Spectrum Noir. I'm just going to add some glitter. You got to be careful when you're adding this because you, you do watercolor, so it does can react if you press too hard. And we're going to finish the card off by adding some lilac rhinestones from Pajama Crafter Stamps. I'm just going to sprinkle these around the sentiment. I ended up putting two, three on one side and two on the other of the sentiment. I think I put three at the top and two on the bottom of the sentiment right there. And I'm using my little pickup wand that you can pick up in the store also. I have all the supplies linked and listed below. I'm going to use my Barely Art glue, which is like my favorite glue, to attach these down. After I get them nice and straight where I want them. So I can just take and pick this up. I pulled it out of my cupcake glue holder from Pajama Crafter Stamp, which is like my godsend. Love that thing. Especially since it has the little magnet that holds the pen and I don't lose my pen. Now here's a look at the card. Here's a closer look at the card and I'm going to show you another look standing up. And I hope y'all join me for the next video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Love you. Stay crafty.